2022 Toyota Rise. It's giving us a problem. This vehicle just recently came from the port and something is wrong because apparently, I don't know if they connected the battery wrong. They were running the vehicle with the battery slack and the hybrid system is giving a lot of trouble. So let's cook up the scandal and see what's going on. Toyota Rice and the same uh, Daihatsu Rocky hybrid, of course. Let's continue. Okay, so here we are. Let's see, we already hooked up the scandal. Reading here the topography. I'm not getting any readings, any fault code, nothing red. Hmm. Go for a short trip. So what I found is that when I begin to drive the vehicle, I'm getting these fault codes of the hybrid system. Inverter water pump, dry running fault, current. I also have another code, torque execution monitoring. Then I, when I was driving the vehicle, she begins like to make a lot of bucking and things. Let's go to do a visual inspection. I be in a vehicle that it's brand new. Once we go and do a visual inspection, let me show you. Let's come over here and find out that this reservoir is completely empty. Let's just stop it up. All right, so topping it up. Doing a visual inspection, we can clearly say, look, we have a coolant leak from the high voltage system. Ah, crap. Let me see if we can find any visual inspection, but no. Okay, so we got our diagnose. This 2021-2022 Toyota Rise, it's having, it just came from the port. But we found out that something's going on. Probably this vehicle was involved in an accident. I'm not sure. Uh, something happened, something slack, but we don't have any access. So I'm gonna have to take it to my shop, lift it over and open it up. But in the meantime, our diagnosis is telling us that the inverter system, the high voltage system in the front, the cooling system was completely empty and that of course you won't get permission for output power from the inverter. So this is the problem, time to repair. Let's open it up and let's see what's going on because this vehicle is losing hybrid system coolant. Why would that be in that vehicle that new? Stick around. So yeah, kind of a little tricky. I had to remove absolutely almost all the front in order to move this frame to take out the hybrid system cooling. Now the hybrid system cooling is very interesting because we have the reservoir over here. We have the coolant pump, the, ra the radiator fan, and a small little radiator with some plastic cover fins. So we're gonna have to open this because it looks like we're having a leak somewhere around here. So we're gonna have to open it up and see what's going on. Let me open it. But before we open, I was wondering if we have a leak under the reservoir and no. I was wondering if by chance it was the coolant pump and definitely not. It's not the coolant pump. The coolant pump looks fine. It could be the radiator broken. Let's open it up and find out. But then look at the radiator. Physically, mm, not looking bad, right? I actually knew. But the thing is that making diagnostic, you have to be aware always of details. Let me show you. So this is the radiator. But if we get to the other side, hmm, something is wrong here. You see this like look like a little bend compared to the other side, right? Let's twist it. The other side even look is stretch. Straight, I'm sorry. And the other side, hmm, all right. Now let's do a visual inspection here. But the most accurate test over here, let me see. I'm not seeing any crack, nothing, but this is look could be bent. Time for the real test. So what we're doing is a pressure test. We're gonna see if we have any leak by chance. So how do we do that? Well, put it inside water and begin to blow. Oh! <laughs> okay, hold on. <laughs> Holy cow, it's leaking from both sides. Leaking from here and leaking from here. So definitely, yes, this radiator was, was bent. So the radiator coolant is the problem. There's nothing we can do. We're gonna have to replace this unit. So these brand new vehicles, where are we going to find this unit? I'm gonna have to find out. So what do you say if we do an in-depth technical review of the 2022 Toyota Rise Hybrid? Let's inspect the hybrid system, the hybrid battery, if it has a filter. Let's inspect, inspect the internal combustion engine. Let's see how much oil it takes. Let's say, let's take a look to the injectors. Let's check the filters. Let's check the transaxle, the inverter, the cooling system in a quick review so you will be able to monitor how to properly service your new Toyota Rise hybrid. So stick around. So because this vehicle is gonna be here for a little while because it has a little problem with the hybrid system coolant, the radiator is gone, so we're gonna have to replace it. In the meantime, let's do a quick inspection. Let's see what we got over here. We have, this vehicle is actually from Daihatsu Motor. You have to remember that Toyota Rise is the same Daihatsu Rocky the hybrid vehicles, they are the same vehicles. So let's see what type of engine this vehicle uses. So as you guys can see, this vehicle uses a WA VEX 1.1 liter internal combustion engine. But this engine is, look, 
This is a three cylinder, it's actually even smaller than the new Aqua. <laughs> but the other thing is, look, we have the multi-port full injection over here, but the thing is this one uses two injectors per cylinder. Pretty nice and efficient, right? The air intake over here, the EGR, pretty easy to service right here. Spark plugs, don't even mention to take them out and service. The oil dipstick right here. What about the oil filter? There it is. Can you see it? There is your filter. I'm just giving you a little guy. But then, hmm, Jose, I'm not seeing the air filter. Let me show you. It's because I put it inside. But if you see the air filter, the air filter is actually the same air filter of the Toyota Aqua, which is great. Of the old Aqua and the new, let's see, Prius 4 generation as well, using the same air filter. So it's pretty nice and affordable. But then because this is hybrid, no bell system, none of those things. We have the AC in electrical water pump and then of course the high voltage electric AC compressor. Nothing more to see over here than the normal service as it gets. Now about the transmission, this hybrid system is a little more efficient and improvement compared to the old version. Let me show you. So we have the new type of inverter assembly, okay? Now this one has the correction from the battery and the correction for the, for the AC compressor, but this one, and as you guys can see, these are the lines from the high voltage cooling system, or the hybrid system cooling, okay? That goes directly into the inverter assembly as well as the transmission is also liquid cool, which is great. Pretty nice and reliable, right? Now let's go under the vehicle. I wanna see what type of transmission this vehicle uses. We are here under the vehicle, but I'm not seeing any label sticker of the transaxle. Let me see, it looks like the P910, but I'm not sure, the same as the Aqua, probably, but let me let me corroborate. Found the label of the transmission, and this one says that it's a E1A. Another super interesting topic of this new Toyota Rise is that it doesn't use the electric brake booster system. Let me show you. Probably because the vehicle is so tiny. <laughs> but look what we have here. We have a normal air vacuum brake booster system and the normal ABS. How about that, eh? I would say that it's because the vehicle is extremely tiny and light, but I love it. But yet still it's very similar to the, to the new Aqua. So as you guys can see, this vehicle is not so much complicated to service, actually pretty basic. So if you're gonna buy a Toyota Rise Hybrid, super easy to service absolutely everything. So stick with your preventive maintenance and believe me, these vehicles are very nice. Now remember, this is Daihatsu. Daihatsu is also a great vehicle, okay? So let's check out now the hybrid system. Now, because we were doing some inspection yesterday, I already took out the seat from the front and look, we have access to the frame, but I'm gonna have to take it out. But before taking out the frame, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna disconnect the service plug grip, just to save. Now we gotta take off the frame that's under the vehicle, but we see, ah, there's you know, kind of like star head, but I'm seeing lots of metal debris over here. What the hell happened here? So we took out the back seat frame. You gotta be careful, it's heavy, but not only that, it's very sharp, okay? So I strongly recommend use glove or have a gorilla hand like me. By the way, do you wanna know why these Toyota Rise are a little more expensive, for example, than the Aqua? Let me show you. It's simple, the hybrid system is way more advanced, look. This vehicle uses a lithium ion battery. You know what that means, right? The battery is lighter, but way stronger. But the lithium ion batteries, those batteries are quite expensive. So let's open it up. Let's see what we find. But the main issue is why do we have this, all this metal debris over here? What the crap? Somebody want to explain what the hell happened here? <sighs> anyway, we just take out, this is, a, uh, obviously this is the exhaust, the air exhaust, okay? So I'm just gonna clean it up. I'm gonna leave it over here. I'm gonna put it here in the back. And let me take out the battery. So I already opened this side, the main cover. So we have the main connection of the positive and negative that goes directly to the inverter. The battery cooling fan that I already took it off. Okay. Uh, well, let's see. It's a little clean, but we're still gonna clean it more. But I am very curious what these, all these bunch of debris, metal debris. So I have to disconnect the, these two cables, the relay and the interlock. And then we will take out the battery. Everything is well disconnected. Now let's go to the other side. There we took it up. Oh, <laughs> all right, but, but hey, look. What is all this metal debris? What the hell happened here? Oh boy. Something happened over here. Probably this vehicle got in a big collision and this is probably all a big repair, but I have to clean this. All this metal debris next to a hybrid battery. Come on. So anyway, we're gonna clean this, but it's time to check the hybrid battery. 
you guys won't believe how light is this battery that I carry it on my own with only one hand. It's actually pretty light because it's a lithium ion battery. So we're gonna have to clean it up. Let's open it and let's see what we have. We will continue then. So before we open, let's see some specs. Battery acid, this is the part number, okay? We know it's Daihatsu motor and 0.78 kilowatts hour. So you have to remember the hybrids doesn't need a bigger, stronger battery. It's just for hybrid system and start stop system and fuel efficient. No, stop wasting time, time to open it up. Lithium ion batteries, they're quite unstable. So they require a self balancing system. So that's why the lithium ion batteries are way more expensive but they're better, stronger and lighter. Let's keep looking. So following the air cooling system, this is the air inlet goes from within, it passes through the cells, stop tiny little gap between them and flows to this air to the outlet. That's how it works. So let's not make it more complicated than what it is, okay? What we're gonna do, we're just gonna blow this with lots of air, take away all this, look, all this dust and debris, clean it up. Whew clean up the compartment inside and assemble back the battery. This is basically servicing a high voltage lithium ion battery. No need to rebalance, no need to recondition, none of those crap. These lithium ion batteries don't need that, just for cleaning purposes, which is quite necessary. But before we finish, I want to follow the positive circuit, okay? This is, a, this is a positive circuit coming from the outlet. And finally, over here, it goes to the inverter, right? So. It, so the thing is, the service plug grip does not open the circuit inside the battery. I don't understand why, but anyway, that's how it is. So the service plug grip comes from the main fuse, which is located right here, and enters over here, which is this one will be my main positive. Passes through the cell stacks, and this is the main outlet. Travels from this cable that can be disconnected over there to the next opposite polarity, and then travels all the way the circuit of the lithium ion cells and finally we will reach to the main negative outlet right here and finally negative outlet to the inverter there it is shiny again as good as new so stick around. Now finish it to assemble. The fan is cool, completely clean. The battery is completely clean. Finish to assemble the battery. Here we go. And that's it. Fully assembled, clean, and as good as new. The hybrid batteries under my watch are as good as new. Another super important topic to consider is that all new Toyotas, they implement a high voltage battery air filter. So yes, it's a, it has a pros as a con. The pros, system doesn't get so dirty, although it was pretty dirty, but the filter gets clogged if you don't service. So every time you service your Toyota hybrid, service the high voltage battery air filter. So let's assemble it. There it is. The complete hybrid system is completely assembled. The filter is as good as new. Don't make it more complicated than that. This is servicing the high voltage system. There you go, as good as new. So in essence, Jose, would you recommend buying the new Toyota Rise Hybrid? Strongly, yes. The Toyota Rise Hybrid is indeed an amazing vehicle, super reliable and easy to service. So if you wanna buy this vehicle, go ahead with your eyes closed. A very, very nice vehicle. So stick around for more tips.